This videotape will be the LFWA MCSC first distributed learning videotape. It will deal with reserve demolitions. I am Lieutenant Colonel Jack Harris and I am an engineer. The aim of this period is to describe the selection, control, security, and firing of reserve demolitions. When the operational plan is firm and withdrawal routes are established, the final selection of reserve demolitions can be made. Tactical considerations dictate how the demolition guard defends the bridge or the demolition from the enemy. Ground and approaches to the demolition site assume vital importance. The military engineer must deal with technical considerations in destroying targets. Your staff officer's handbook provides some labor constants for various types of targets for exercise purposes. You will note that there is a considerable technical difference between demolishing a large bridge and cratering and mining a ford. Denial of the ford is much less complex and therefore less risky. It would be the favored option if either could serve to deny a particular route or approach. A simple rule that demonstrates economy of effort is that all demolitions on a reserved route must be classified as reserved. Avoid tying down large numbers of infantry, armor, or engineers guarding or holding reserved demolitions that may not really be required. As a rough guide, a division should restrict itself to no more than four reserved routes through its area. Once a reserved demolition has been selected, a suitable means of control must be established. Let us first take a look at the commanders involved and their responsibilities. First, the authorized commander. The initial authorized commander is a formation commander who designate the res designated the reserved routes. He may retain this authority or he may delegate it as part of his operation order. For example, the Corps commander could, would likely retain the authority to fire any demolitions on a reserve route as long as there are Corps troops forward of that reserve demolition. After their withdrawal, the Corps commander would usually delegate authority to the divisional commander. Once divisional troops withdraw, authority to order the firing could be delegated to a brigade. Only in rare circumstances would authority be delegated to unit commanders. In any event, the commander to whom the authority is delegated becomes the new authorized commander. His responsibilities are outlined in your precy. The next commander is the demolition guard commander. He is normally a company or squadron commander detailed to guard the demolition. Whenever a demolition guard is provided, only the demolition guard commander can order the demolition to be fired on the direction of the authorized commander. Next, the engineer commander. He is the senior engineer in the formation that ordered the reserved demolition. The engineer commander issues the order to the demolition firing party commander and is responsible for the technical aspects of the de demolition. Beyond that point, he has no further responsibilities on the site. Finally, the last man in the chain is a demolition firing party commander. This is the sapper officer or non-commissioned officer who will fire the demolition. If he has done his job properly, the demolition will be successful. Now we will examine the two states of readiness. State 1, safe, means that the entire demolition has been set up but not likely to be prematurely or accidentally detonated. To change to state 2, armed, takes time and labor. Time may re be reduced by increasing the size of the firing party. In any case, 15 to 20 minutes should be the maximum time required determined during rehearsals. In some circumstances, the change of state may revert from armed 
to safe, then back to armed, many times before the demolition is actually fired. Paragraph 10, Part 2 of the demolition order, has only space for three changes. However, an annex can be added if required. Now let's picture a reserve demolition set near the handover line between a core covering force and a division main defense area. The covering force is tasked to delay the enemy for 48 hours. The demolition guard is an infantry combat team reinforced with a platoon of tows. The guard commander initially has a field troop in support to prepare the demolition and later a field section under command as the firing party. The bridge sits astride a main axis of approach for a motor rifle regiment, which is expected to lead with a battalion in the advance guard. The site offers long-range tank and missile targets. The guard commander's estimate suggests two phases. The first, before the withdrawal of the covering force, and the second, during its withdrawal. During phase one, he will prepare the bridge for demolition, complete his defense, control traffic over the bridge, and defend the bridge in its reserve demolition. During phase two, he will assist the covering force to withdraw, stop the enemy from interfering with his mission, and have the bridge destroyed on receipt of the order. His phase one enemy will probably try to infiltrate his position or attempt a coup de main operation by Halliborn or mechanized forward detachments. Battalion sized detachments would arrive 24 to 48 hours after the enemy's main body enters the covering force area. A Halliborn assault in support of a main thrust could be 6 to 12 hours ahead of a link up. In phase two, he hopes that the covering force will make a clean break and that he will receive the order to fire the demolition before the enemy arrives. More awkwardly, however, the enemy might arrive before all the friendlies have withdrawn or be mixed in with withdrawing troops. Time and space. The guard commander must set priorities for his men and their supporting arms. The engineer troop commander will also assign priority to his tasks. The sapper first prepares a single cut in the structure and connects it to a firing circuit. At this point, the firing party is detached from the field troop and should work directly for the guard commander. Its primary task will be to ensure the target can be fired at any time by maintaining the firing circuit and adding in all charges as they are prepared by the supporting field troop. After the first cut has been prepared, the troop commander will improve the strength of the obstacle by adding a second or third cut, mining forge sites, adding craters, or destroying bridge piers and abutments. This slide shows the site of the bridge demolition guard. The enemy is approaching from the east. Mutual support be between platoons and troops is mandatory. First, the security elements. In this case, three platoons are deployed around the bridge, with one on the enemy side. Long-range weapons initially deploy floorward of the bridge. They are covered by remaining systems in depth. An anti-armor reserve should be formed. Next, surveillance. OPs must be ready to redeploy at any time. Augment augmenting foos and fire controllers will be listening posts and sentries on both sides of the river. Radars and unattended ground sensors will be deployed. Obstacles will be developed to assist the contro defense, control movement in the area, and to strengthen the final obstacle. 
mechanized approaches will be mined. Foot approaches will be wired and seeded with anti-personnel mines. Water approaches will be blocked against combat divers. Recall that during the Second World War in the Netherlands, the Germans floated explosive rafts down the Rhine and Wall rivers with timers set to blow under bridges being used to support the Allied advance. Mobility and traffic control are next. Well forward of the bridge would be a traffic control post, a roadblock, a means of redirecting refugees, and a checkpoint for liaison officers from withdrawing forces. A second roadblock closer to the bridge might also be required. Alternate means of crossing the river should be provided in case the bridge is blocked or destroyed with friendly troops remaining on the far side. Command and control of the demolition guard should be executed from a CP that has a good view of the bridge and its approaches. The firing point must be co-located with the CP. The authorized commander's LO will always maintain direct contact with the demolition guard commander and the authorized commander and will normally be located at the main CP. Alternate firing post points and CPs could be on the enemy side of the bridge if an assault from the rear is possible. The guard commander and the firing party commander must never be separated and each must have an understudy at the alternate location or locations. Therefore seniority and duty rosters must be maintained. Now consider firing the demolition. On receipt of the order to fire the demolition from the authorized commander, the demolition guard commander signs the firing party commander's copy of the demolition order and he executes demolition of the target. A final point, the authorized commander must decide early in the proceedings whether he will allow the demolition guard commander to fire the bridge on his own initiative if it is in danger of being captured. There is a space on the demolition order, paragraph 6, for such a decision to be recorded. Here is a copy of important parts of the demolition order. The headquarters of the authorized commander is shown where it says from. The authorized commander can delegate authority for the demolition to a subordinate commander by issuing an order or the code word that is provided on the form. If the new authorized commander wishes to change the procedure, amend the code words, or in any other way alter the orders, he must issue another demolition order. If he wishes to amend the initial emergency firing orders at paragraph 6, he must draft a new form, unless provision to do so has already been made at paragraph 5. A demolition order might be adequate for a succession of up to three new authorized commanders if it is prepared properly. If the demolition guard or the firing party changes, a new form should be issued. Guidance is given to commanders in paragraph X for 10 and at paragraph XX for 20 on the back of the demolition order. Now let us look at a possible command net on these slides. The first method of alternate communications is the brigade group command net, shown on this slide. A second method of communication is the battalion command net. The field squadron command net provides one additional method of communications. And 
finally, of course, there is the artillery net. Please note that the armored net and the air defense net may be used if tanks and air defense detachments are involved. This slide shows all of the interconnected nets. This network shows the brigade commander as the authorized commander. Note how the liaison officer's alternate means of communications provides a direct link from the authorized commander to the demolition guard commander. This next slide shows the normal sequence that can be expected at the demolition site. There's the layout of the bridge site and the demolition guard. Establishment of the command post, firing point, and review of the demolition order. Preparation of the bridge to state one, or safe, is the first order of business. Timings, rehearsal, to move the bridge from state one safe to state two armed, must be conducted. On receipt of the code word, state two armed must be moved and it's prepared to state two. The engineer commander reports the demolition ready at state two armed. The demolition guard commander receives the code word to fire the demolition. He signs the demolition order to fire the demolition. The engineer and the firing party fire the demolition. And the results of the demolition are reported. These procedures have been devised to ensure that demolitions are not prematurely detonated and that only the appropriate commander can order the firing of the demolition. A great number of lives or the operation itself could hang in the balance. And now we'll ask you to watch a British unit as they take you through a demolition guard and a reserved bridge demolition. In Northwest Europe, the rivers and the canals have played a profound part in the politics of the countries through which they flow. In times of peace, commercial highways connecting with the sea. In times of war, formidable obstacles to any military operation. Since most of these waterways flow from south to north, the control of the bridges crossing them is of major strategic value to the defense of the West. Many will be destroyed as soon as hostile forces threaten them. These are termed preliminary demolitions. A much smaller number, essential for the successful movement of friendly forces in attack or defense, and capable of demolition in a single phase, would be kept intact until the very last moment. These are known as reserve demolitions, and as well as bridges, the term defines any point on a route whose use and closure the tactical commander wishes to control. It could be a minefield gap or an important defile. But whatever form a reserve demolition takes, high priority must be given to its control and defense right up to the moment of its destruction. This is the task of the demolition guard. It's long been said that he who would live in peace should prepare for war. So most reserved demolitions are earmarked well in advance of hostilities and the demolition guard commander usually has ample opportunity in peacetime to plan the deployment of his forces to ensure its proper defence in time of war. I'm quite convinced that that farm there is the one we'll put our headquarters in. 
We'll dig ourselves in just to the right of the washing. We can use the facilities there. It's about the right distance from the bridge for safety. And we can use the facilities, for example, for the air group. Yes, we must look for a position for the alternative command post. I'm sure there's a farm over there that's within the reasonable distance. A demolition guard right. commander will normally have at his disposal a combat team, which might typically consist of three infantry platoons, a Milan section, a blowpipe section, a tank troop, and a close recce screen. The fourth platoon must cover that roadblock. I see the traffic control point. As well as the defense of the reserve demolition, he must plan for the establishment on the far bank of a roadblock to slow the speed of approaching vehicles, and a checkpoint to monitor military and civilian traffic, and most probably refugees. I would have put a tank in that farm. Certainly have no problem getting in between the barns. Yes, you can have one tank forward or two. I'll have two of the three four by day. Certainly one in there. The plan for the demolition may be changed or updated. But such advanced preparation means the demolition guard commander can react instantly and effectively if at any future date an enemy should attack. I've been going around the national groups. Have you anything for me? Nothing really, because they're apart from the signing of the 9811, the orders to the demolition. Oh, yes. The orders for the demolition are contained in the NATO standard form 9811. Through it, the authorized commander exercises complete responsibility for the exact timing of when to move from state one, safe, to state two, armed, and ultimately, when to fire the demolition. He must sign three copies. One copy is held by the issuing headquarters. One copy goes to the firing party commander, and one to the demolition guard commander. Provision is made on the form for the role of authorized commander to be delegated down the chain of command should this be necessary. The demolition guard commander must keep his copy with him at all times. The mission, gentlemen. D Company combat team is to deny the bridge to the enemy to deny the bridge to the enemy. Execution general outline. We will hold the bridge with three platoons, one tank troop, a close recce troop, and two blowpipe firing posts. Ten platoon will be depth platoon in the village of Wimberg. Eleven platoon will be the close guard platoon on the bridge. And twelve platoon will be the forward platoon covering the roadblock. The tank troop, I want two tanks forward by day, one in depth on the home bank. Hope Curry, sir, fine party commander. So then, let me find bridges further down the canal. Have you got the orders for the demolition? Yes, sir. Copy number two? Yes, sir. Seems in order. How long to get to state one? Should take between three and a half and four hours, sir. Gonna have to crack along then pretty quickly. Yes, sir. My section has to the task already. Organization and tasks. India 4-1, Farron, your grouping. You'll have attached four Zulu vehicles from India 4-3. Your area is on the eastern edge of Vimberg, grid 650-920. Tasks. You are the depth platoon covering the rear of the bridge, especially that open ground. You are to be prepared to destroy any enemy heliborne landings in that open area by mobile counterattack using your own and the additional L-37s from the India 4-3 call signs. India 4-2, Graham, your area is the bridge itself, 658920. Your tasks. You are the close guard platoon on the bridge. You've got attached one blowpipe firing post. That's Golf 5-7 Bravo. India 4-3, David, 
detach all your Zulu vehicles to India 41. Your area, establish your platoon around the road junction at 662920. Your tasks. You are the forward platoon covering the roadblock. Still see that, okay? Yeah. And the close recce troop, with its four cars, providing a screen east of the village of Heightson. And 4-3, tank troop, and Milan, it's essential you know where he is, so tie up. Combat team headquarters, 655 nine two three with the alternative headquarters at six five six nine one seven should the main cp be knocked out the alternative command post can take over if an avery is available it could be co-located with it an avery is an ideal alternative firing point it is armored and its gun is an effective means of destroying this type of bridge if all other methods fail Tango 34, 663924, and Tango 34 Bravo, 662917. Tango 34 Alpha, somewhere in the northeastern edge of Wimberg. I'm off to have a look at the bridge. Right, I sir. need a copy of your seniority roll. Right, I've got them made out already, sir. Good. Ask what firms might do, I see, sir. Right. Make sure the sergeant major gets a copy of that. You yeah. can take ours from off the board. Okay, sir. Come on, Robinson. Right, sir. We'll take the helicopters as they come in over the tree line. Yeah. Ground attack aircraft will probably be coming in at about 2,000 foot to hit the bridge. How cool, Curry? Any problems? No, sir, we should be at state one in about 15, 20 minutes. All right, thank you. Got one, as the um, seven rate calls, I'm forward to back in his location. Yes, sir. You've got any other problems about your defence doors? Well, I'm not happy about this water. Uh, it only goes down the wire about four foot six. Mm. I need probably about another 12 uh, coils of wire to actually finish the job. Yeah, do you need that boat again this evening? If possible, yes. Hello, CP. This is Cole Fearon. Bridge now at serial five. CP, right. What I want you to do now is rehearse, go from serial 5 to serial 6 and time it. Okay. When you've done that, check that all the charges are secure this and well protected. Sir, the British know what state one. Thanks very much, Scott Curry. Could you inform 49 uh, the British know at state one? Yes, sir. Hello, 49, this is for serial 5, over. Sir, from the sappers, they've just contacted 4 and they've now finished on the bridge. That's good, that's not bad. Four and a half hours to get to state one. Good evening, David. Good evening, sir. How's things? Fine, we've got quite a flow of civilian traffic coming through. Yeah, I see the German police have arrived. Good man. 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 Da geht man durch. Right, Corporal Curry. How long is it going to take to get this bridge of ours from State 1 to State 2? Well, sir, I rehearsed my guys doing that, and it took them 11 and a half minutes. Uh, but if you allow for the possibility of doing it at night or under fire, it should take about 15. 15? What was that? Uh, state 1 to State 2. 15 minutes. Last light and battle still distant means withdrawal of both the forward tanks to the home bank. To protect them would otherwise mean an unnecessary strain on infantry resources. At 
first light, they recross and reposition. Tango 9-4, this is for Sunray speaking. How many more serials to go through, over? There is a detailed plan for orderly withdrawal, but in the fog of war, units may well be delayed. The LOs at the checkpoint must be sure that all their unit serials are accounted for. Contact, we're out. Take cover. Get back, get back, get back. 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 Get Do a check of all rumours and charges as quick as you can. Yeah? I've checked the orange and black and that's all right. Yes, sir, Chris Richards. What's happening at Black Pig? Well, there's a heavy war attack on Black Pig, but that was repelled. And the covering force are holding them along the 8 0 Easting. You got as far as that, then? Yes. Better mark that up somewhere. Yeah, okay, sir. Good, fight off. Führerschein, Fahrzeugschein. Come on, boys. Snell, let's move. Here. Close right up. Dali, Dali. India 4, India 4, 3. A small packet from 4, 5, India 3 has just passed through my location. Over. 4, Roger. With India 3 obviously finishes SARS 4, that's good. Yes. This is 9-4. Due to possible sabotage attempt, state one may have been lost on spring tide. It's being checked now, over. Why did you let the car stop on the bridge, Keegan? Sir, I had no chance. Excuse me, sir. Sir, is it right to go to the bridge and check it myself? Yes, give it a jolly good search. I want to know how somebody got at those cables. Did you put that horizontal ring main in? Yeah. Right, it's wrong. It should be on the other side underneath the handrail, where no one can see it. Now, you've got ten minutes to get it right. Move. Here's on, Barney. Sir, I 
Command Corporal Curtis to IC. Corporal Firon, you are now firing party commander. You must stay here in this headquarters at all times. I can't afford to lose another firing party commander. This is India 4-3. We have an unidentified packet of soft vehicles believed to be a lost Bundesvehr unit causing some confusion at the checkpoint. Over. Hi, nice. Be strict. Pilot Deutsch, in English. We have to go over the bridge to join our unit. Who are you? Which regiment are you from? Second Company, 11th Regiment. And where are you going to? Of the brook. Ah, you with the skins last night. Okay, fine. If you get out of it quickly, move away. Okay. Let's get the tanks coming through here. Sir, Brigade say that leading elements of 212 Motor Rifle Regiment are now on the 73 Easting. On the 73 Easting? They're getting close, sir, Major. Right, Hello, Charlie Charlie 4, this is 4. Leading elements of the enemy now on the 73 Easting. Out. Yeah, we're going to have to keep those tanks on that far bank right until the last minute. Southwest, go and tell the platoon commander now. Hello, two. This is nine four. Spring tide now under heavy bombardment. Over. charges on the bridge. When was the last time you checked them? Check them again now, and then report straight back Hello, to the Charlie 4, this is 4, enemy heliborne landing now confirmed, grid 625 and 995, a two hips supported by three hind, ever. Sir, one kings have just told brigade that the heliborne attack has been broken up by artillery fire, but remnants possibly up to two platoons strong, heading in this direction. Hello, Charlie Charlie 4, this is 4. Uh, formation to our south report remnants of enemy heliborn uh, company, possibly two platoons are strong heading uh, towards our location from the southwest. Stay alert, ever. Roger, Dalek now, over. 
Dalek now, sir. Dalek. State one, state two. Corporal Fearham, bring your form over. Dalek now. Go to tell zero. Um, zero, this is four, Dalek now. Zero, Dalek now, over. Four, Dalek now, out. Russ, take it to Serial 6, now. Enemy dives under a bridge. Cash? Serial 6 complete. Serial 6, right. Bridge now, stay 2, sir. Good. Send Dalek complete. Right, Send Dalek complete to zero. Hello, Cash. 2, this is 9 4, Dalek complete, over. 9 4, Poseidon now, over. 9 4, Roger, Poseidon now, over. Poseidon. 4, Dalek complete now, and. Send Poseidon as well. Right, sir. Oh, uh, and zero, this is four, Poseidon now, over. Hello, four, this is four, three. Tango six, two's moving through my location at speed. And I can hear, by saying an I can hear, enemy armour moving in the forward end of the village. Over. Doesn't that mean you can blow it if it's about to be captured? That's exactly what it means. Zulu India 49, this is four. As soon as that last packet's moved through you, get back across the side as soon as possible. Zulu India 49, where's it going? Hello, Tango 34, this is four. Pull back now, over. Four, three, the enemy appear to be making a break for three tide. Over. Right, sir, Major. Gonna bring the bridge to back now. Right, sir. Hello, India 4 2. Uh, this is four. Uh, move back and report when clear. Over. Charlie, Charlie, four. This is four. Firing in one minute. Firing in one minute. Over. Four, one, Roger. to play the bridge now. Four, two, Roger. Blow it. Russ, fire it now and leg it. Four, this is India 4 3, enemy APC is moving towards me at a village. Squid 667 and 000, I'm up there, over. Uh, 4 Roger, we'll fire Zulu Tango 1739. Uh, when's this thing going to blow? 
Well, it's all up to the safety views now, sir. That, then, is the task of the demolition guard commander, frequently performed under the constraints and discomfort of NBC conditions, with a constant threat of electronic jamming disrupting communications, and the mental stress of a decision which could mean abandoning friendly units without hope of rescue. It is, of course, only a specialised application of the normal principles of defence, but it calls for a greater dexterity in the use and coordination of military skills than perhaps any other task that might fall to a combat team commander. Hello 4, this is 4-3 Bravo. Demolition successful, including the abutments. 60 meter gap. Approach roads greater than mine. Over. 4, well done, up. In summary, I would like to stress the importance of proper command and staff work in the successful firing of reserve demolitions. The completion of the demolition formats must be flawless and timely. Please note that this is a G3 responsibility. The reserve demolitions selected must be tactically and technically sound and their quantity kept to an absolute minimum. All personnel must be trained to a high standard of teamwork to ensure the successful completion of a demolition guard mission. Thank you for your attention. I will be available on the 8th of February during the scheduled LDE to answer questions and listen to comments on this method of instruction. Thank you for paying attention to reserved demolitions.